I, I don't think Saudis are also that stupid to just come and like splurge 60 million yeah. to get Casemiro. He's had humiliation on an on an international scale on the Premier League in the last. This entire season was not a good look on him, right? Like so, even if they come in, I think they'll just play ball with United, and they have all of the negotiating leverage. Like, what do you guys think of this uh, like retired grandpa figure moving around our defense <laughs> called Casemiro? Like what? What has happened to him, man? Like, I I think he has given up, man. I think if you saw the last game, uh, I think Crystal Palace. I guess I think the way he was culpable for at least like two goals, right? And and, and this game as well. I mean, he should be the leading figure uh, for United defense for a makeshift makeshift defense. He should, and he is the most experienced player. <laughs> but I think his body has given up more than more than his more than mentally, um, and I. Again, first goal, you can see how slow he was and how out of shape the back line was because he couldn't track back. And at this point of time, I think as much as he wants to perform, and I know he 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 might as well want to do it for United, but I don't think his his capabilities are still there. And I think uh, just kind of leaving to Saudi or MLS or some other league which can which suits him more is the best thing for him. Um, and I think I think again this is emblematic of all the signings that United used to have been doing for the past like six seven years right i mean bringing in makeshift players having them only there for a couple of years or so and then kind of and on huge wages and huge transfer fees and again i think this this kind of approach needs to change um and yeah i think he's been a liability i think he's uh more than more than his uh, i just don't think he wants to play center back to be honest i feel like he's he's just not interested in playing that position uh and this was kind of like both the matches were kind of the situations where he's like, yeah, whatever happens, it'll happen. I'll stand there. I'll do my regular bit that I do, but I'm not going to put in like extra effort because I just don't want to be playing here. Uh, I think if he, if if it was the other way around, Casemiro and Amrabat, Amrabat I think had a good game. Uh, if they were swapped, I think probably might have avoided the first goal. But uh, but then again, I'm sure Eric Tenag must have seen something to you know play the positions that he played. But you know, Casemiro has been this disinterested since the beginning of the season, like, and when he was actually playing as a yeah. center CDM. So it's not just that this game, because he's playing as a center back, he's like checked out completely mentally. It's just like been his performance, the like, theme of his performance throughout the season, and it just doesn't. There's no way to explain how a player of his stature, of his experience, of his class, is. Probably the worst player in the team right now. It's very, it's very difficult to to make any excuses for Casemiro the way he's playing. To be honest, yeah. uh, very, it's very bad. Weirdly, like synonymous to Wayne Rooney's career and how his decline is. If you think about it, like they peaked yeah. early, and it's just bad timing, dude. Like he's just 32. Like will turn 33. Mm-hmm. There have been classier players who've played longer, midfielders especially like Cruz. Modric, Real Madrid probably must have seen something to like replace yeah. him, and uh, it was just smart business by them. Again, another series of dumb decisions by like United board for not <laughs> going for Rice in the same window over like Casemiro for the same amount of money, right? Like it's yeah. just lack of foresight, and uh, this the the position that we are in is actually if you think about it, it's not a surprise because. It was a series of like bullshit decisions and like wasted misman gross mismanagement at United that mm-hmm. led to this point, right? And what is the like the only solution right now is to clear out this dead wood, rebuild a couple of seasons very seriously, like not think about superficial things, right? Like let's not think about that like this team is going to go win the title next season. Let's have like smaller goals. Think about like a longer. Uh, longer term vision because that's how great teams have been rebuilt in the past like Liverpool Arsenal City for for in fact like they didn't build overnight and I think we should just give up on that idea I think just yeah. one Casimir comment there right? emblematic yeah just one comment there I think I, it, this is more about Arsenal but I think Thomas Partey is very similar in a very similar situation to Casemiro at this point of time like Thomas Partey what Thomas Partey is having that season what Casemiro had his last season at Real Madrid like very comparable uh I feel like if Thomas Partey stays in our team next season I think he'll be exposed he'll be exposed just like Casemiro is getting exposed because he's he's just not it I think our game has moved past him especially he missed 30 games uh gives a lot of chances like whatever chances you had in the first half 
it was either him slipping or diving or like making a miss pass like you remember the first first 5 minutes or something uh Hoyland had a chance where he slipped it was again Thomas Partey being lethargic with the ball so i think for us that is that that position needs to be resolved very very quickly in the next transfer window for us to go to the next level uh and then on on Eric Ten Hag right on uh Nihal mentioned Fra- uh Terry Casemiro i remember this is on the manager right i remember him going from wanting Frankie De Jong chasing that kind of a player right. to finally getting Casemiro and i just don't get the decision making because like for example liverpool right liverpool wanted caicedo they wanted uh lavia but then they when they didn't get it get them they went for endo who's a similar profile of player right so you plug in holes by like similar profiles even if the quality is not the same with ten hag it's been completely like you know what's the next shiny toy available on the market because if you look at de jong like franky de jong and casemiro completely different players if you look at kane hoyland completely different i mean profiles are the same but like completely different levels of what you think a team would need you think a team would need an experienced striker and they go and get hoyland for example so there's been like a lot of bad decisions that have been made in the transfer mm-hmm. market either because of lack of structure or lack of transfer nows i think that's just leading to where United are right now. Yeah, and and I think if you want to plug in holes, right? I think you know the the way we bought Endo, right? He was a, he's a stopgap, and he's not going to be a multi million pound high wages player. So we bought him just for this season, while we can get someone else next season. And at that point of time, Klopp was not leaving. Yeah. But I think if you're going, if you if your first and second choice are not available, if you kind of have to buy some, if you're desperate in the transfer in in, in the transfer market and transfer window, just buy someone who can just do the work for that season. Do not kind of spend more wages on him. Do not kind of uh you know get him for 70 million pounds or something right and i think that's what that kind of mentality is not there at united and it's it's always reactionary and even if you look at casemiro right i think the the trio of casemiro cruz and modric modric uh though i think they were the fable midfield who won them all those champions leagues and everything now casemiro is not there and look how they how even cruz and modric modric are like the way they're performing right i think he was if you look back at it i think he is the weakest link of those three and it was real good business from real uh, to kind of send him uh, you know and get all that money and uh, and the wages of their of their market another another example was mount right i remember in the presser in like in pre con uh, like pre match presser eric mm-hmm. tenak said that i'm very happy like he was asked are you disappointed in getting rice and he was like no i'm very happy with mount So in mm-hmm. in his head he's get he basically got Mount instead of Rice not Casemiro instead of Rice which is again very baffling because two completely different profiles of players right and and this resembles to Barcelona a little bit like Barcelona literally have the same kind of approach they had Obama Yang mm-hmm. who would do the job for them they went on and they were like you know we want Lewandowski and they got Lewandowski for, and now look where they are so like yeah. two cl- different leagues different clubs but like in very similar you know situations where there's not enough thought behind building the team And But like a, a man, yeah, it's completely okay for a manager to have only like two options, right? Like there has to be someone within that structure to tell them that, yo, the direction that like the Frankie De Jong example is perfect, right? Like because they're completely different profiles of players, like from Casemiro and Frankie De Jong. If you don't get Frankie De Jong, you don't go chasing the next available centre midfielder, right? Like that's what they did, and you're spot on. I think remember the phase where like. Barca spent 200 million money like stupid money on like stupid players like and made Liverpool rich and made gave Liverpool a Champions League by bankrolling Alisson and uh, Van Dijk right so uh but the, for me the optimistic point is that I feel like Ineos sees this they're calling it out they're calling out like Jim Ratcliffe didn't have to like make that public that our IT department was not sanitary right obviously it came from within the sources he's actually emphasizing how shitty our club is and how poorly it's managed like an elite sporting organization should not be managed like this and i think that is his play to like actually buy more stake and be more involved in the club um I- i'm optimistic dude i feel like finally i think we have owners who are invested in the club emotionally mentally not just physically so and a club of this size will not crumble and we will be back and when we will be when when i'll be here celebrating aj i won't celebrate that we beat three people on the screen we'll be celebrating the title bro <laughs> yeah for sure <laughs> you celebrate whatever you want to celebrate i'll celebrate whatever i want to celebrate so there's no celebration policing here do whatever you want bro <laughs> 
but you know coming back to what you said nihal right like we need to be very very smart with how we move in the next window like we have like all our bad decisions are and financially are coming to bite us right now and when we actually need to rebuild we have to get a lot of these clears off the books including casemiro and that is where like the challenge lies right so how like how, how much do you think even casemiro will go for in this market like given how how he's been playing so far like is saudi like his most likely destination i'm honest if i'm being honest if we if we cover all of his wages i think i'll take it dude like i, I don't think saudi is also that stupid to just come and like splurge 60 million yeah. to get casemiro he's had humiliation on an on an international scale on the premier league in the last this entire season was not a good look on him right like so even if they come in i think they'll just play ball with united and they have all of the negotiating leverage right yeah if saudi is actually spending 70 million to buy casemiro we need to look into like where that money is coming from like like this is serious someone need to step in and see what the fuck is happening because that is just like big red flag um so we should just yeah. take the l bro like remember what arsenal did rip the contracts and take the l and like send them out i think that's what we need to do just take i think the to be honest i feel like saudi money is drying up i mean drying up <laughs> as in like not drying up but like they'll be more prudent now that the league is settled they are on the yeah. stage big players are already there i don't think saudi money is as as freely available as it was uh, yeah. last season or a couple of seasons ago 